The universe, planets, and stars. While these celestial bodies rely on relatively simple concepts to operate, when put together, they coordinate an astonishing complexity. This complexity is impossible to represent with 100% accuracy, but that didn't stop me from taking on the task of simulating the universe in the browser. For this video, I took on the absurd task of simulating the universe using Unity, which is a platform that previously I had no experience with. Before starting this project, I knew there were some baseline goals that I wanted to achieve in making this simulation. First, I wanted to allow the user to create and edit celestial bodies of various masses, radii, textures, positions, and also initial velocities. So using Unity's UI tools, that part came easy, as shown on your screen right now, where I was able to create and edit bodies pretty easily. Second, I wanted those bodies to interact with each other according to the physical laws of the universe. Uh, specifically, Newton's law of universal gravitation. Now, because of the smaller scale I knew that I'd be operating on, I decided to disregard both special and general relativity because I just wasn't dealing with objects of that amount of velocity or mass for relativity to really uh, impact the simulation. Now for the physics, through the use of my epic Google skills, I found a script that, with a little bit of modification, allowed me to apply Newton's law of universal gravitation on every single object in the simulation so that they would all interact with each other according to Newtonian physics. Now finally, the main goal that I wanted for this project was for Universe Simulator to be easy to play and interpretable to the user. Basically, I wanted any user to gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for the equations that govern our universe, namely Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation and, of course, Newton's Three Laws. I wanted to take the abstract equations that we all learn in physics class and then turn them into a simulation that anyone could pick up and gain an intuition for the equations that govern the universe. Now this would actually turn out to be the most difficult part of my development process. In order for the simulation to work well for users, I needed to create a scale that would allow the planets to be easily visible to the user, but also move relatively fast so that the user could actually see the movement of the planets in real time while also not being too slow. Basically, I needed to make a simulation that was easy enough for anyone to understand where within a few minutes they could get objects to orbit around each other. However, even with my best scaling attempts, Udini did not allow me to make objects of higher masses. Basically what would happen is when I would calculate the force, the mass of the object would produce an overflow error that would just throw the entire simulation off. So right now the simulation is at a point where you can only simulate objects to about uh, the size of the moon or Mercury, so around that range. And while this was certainly disappointing for me, uh, there really wasn't any other option because of the overflow and the force vectors. If I tried increasing the scale of the entire simulation, what would happen is the objects would look too tiny and be too close together for the user to really see what was going on. So I settled with the idea that in the end, the objects are just not going to be of a certain amount of density, and that's okay. Something really cool that I learned from this though is the vastness and complexity of space because these objects are just so incredibly massive. And even with exploring the few factors that I did, such as velocity, mass, position, I found myself faced with an incomprehensible amount of complexity and chaos. However, I was able to push through these challenges and finish the simulation I exported it to WebGL and then exported that to GitHub Pages. And you can play this game right now if you go to conradcoder.github.io slash universe simulator. So with that being said, let's see what the final product actually looks like. All right guys, so here we are on the website. As always, link in the description. We have here a simple logo, a play about page, and then also a link to the GitHub. The about page has more info on the methodology of how this was actually created and the GitHub of course has all the code. And also we have the instructions if you scroll down here so that you can see all of the necessary keys you need to use in order to play the game more efficiently. 
Uh, but for now, let's just get started on the beginner mode. And you see when you get to the beginner mode, you have a sun at the center and you have two planets rotating around the sun. So if we click on a planet, you can see you have info on the planet's position, velocity, mass, and radius. And let's zoom out here and you see we have two planets, one rotating horizontally, the other rotating vertically around the sun, or at least from that angle. And what we're gonna do is we can increase the time scale. So we do that. And you see the planets are moving faster around the sun. We can also pause the simulation by moving the time scale all the way to zero days per second. We can also create a body. So here's all the info. It also gives you the sense for the scale. We'll say purple gas. We'll create that body. And there it is. And if we increase the simulation speed, you can see that body does in fact rotate around the sun for a bit until usually eventually it crashes. All right, now let's look at some of the other levels. So we'll reset, we'll exit to menu, intermediate mode, you have just the sun at the center and you can create an object. So we'll say like mass 10 to the 14. Uh, let's make it kind of big. And then we'll say 200, 0, 0, 0, initial velocity, we'll say 100 meters per second in the y direction, 0. We do that, and you see it runs right into the sun. So we'll do that again. You can see it runs right into the sun. If you want to reset the environment because you get lost, you just press the H key, and then there you are back to where you started. And then the only difference between intermediate and advanced mode is that advanced mode you have just a blank screen. So there's no galaxy in the background to kind of help you orient yourself and there's also no sun. We yeah, have that guys that's pretty much it. You can check out the link in the description and let me know what you think. Now throughout making this simulation I encountered a lot of very interesting and at times frustrating aspects of both game development and also the physics of the universe. Perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of physics and just universal mechanics that I encountered in making this project was that of chaos theory. So chaos theory is something that was developed in the 20th century and basically it shows how even from simple laws such as Newton's law of universal gravitation, uh, systems can produce complex, seemingly co stochastic or random decisions. So in the case of Newton's law of gravitation, the law itself is quite simple. You know, you see it on the screen now, not too much to it. However, when you apply it to multiple bodies, you get this huge amount of complexity where the slightest change in any of those variables. So if the planets are slightly closer together or just one planet is just a little bit heavier than the other, uh, it produces a completely different result. Now this is in part because of the way that we compute the forces of the planets, which is written in C-sharp, the language that Unity games are written in. And basically C-sharp, the variables, they can only hold so much complexity when calculating things like force, position, acceleration, etc. And so what's happening is that the individual changes on the forces are so complex that the double precision that Unity allows is not enough precision. Now chaos theory to me presents a lot of intrigue because no matter how well you try to actually compute and account for accuracy, you're never going to be 100% accurate and you can get wildly different results very easily. So there are games that demonstrate this such as Conway's Game of Life, which is shown here, where based on slight initial condition changes, you get a wildly different result for how the game will play out. Now in modeling real planets and solar systems after Newtonian physics, I actually saw a real life implication of what chaos actually looks like. Now difficulties with the end body problem, which is a problem that states that you cannot fully simulate the processes that an end body simulation goes to or more than two body simulation goes to, as well as the fact that C's, C sharp's double precision just would not be enough for this project plagued me from day one. Now obviously there's some things that I did have to sort of disregard one being relativity, although that wasn't super important, and the other being with regards to the collisions. Usually you have two massive rocks that collide with each other in space, 
there's a tendency that maybe they might split up, break off, but I couldn't figure out the physics behind being able to represent that as accurate as possible. So the two planets just kind of combine when you use them in the simulation. No explosions or anything cool like that. But that being said, over the course of a few months, I was able to learn Unity from scratch and create a product that can allow people to gain deeper insight into the equations that govern the universe. With that being said, as always guys, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment down below. Remember, the link to play the simulation is also in the comments as well as the code. And make sure to check out the website if you have any suggestions. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.